And just like that, ChatGPT instantly created this validation room for me. Salesforce in general is already low to no code, but this is something that makes it much more inviting to almost anyone to come collaborate. Welcome to the Lean Scale Podcast, where we talk about everything RevOps. Thank you for listening. I am really excited to be going through this topic. I don't know if excited is the right word. Maybe I'm a little terrified to go through it. Uh, I still have mixed feelings about ChatGPT, the power of AI. I know a lot of technology leaders in the space have mixed feelings about it. Um, but at the same time, it's still absolutely fascinating. And I really love the applications that it has for revenue operations and some of the work that we do. So today I have one of Lean Scale's systems architects, Christopher Mardian, um, who's gonna walk through some ways he uses ChatGPT in his daily work with Salesforce. Christopher, thank you so much for being here. Yeah, happy to be here. Happy and excited to talk about such a terrifying topic, too. I think uh, we can maybe ease people's minds a bit and shed some light on the future of AI and what ChatGPT does for me and what it can do for you um, and everyone. You mentioned the word terrifying. I think that's actually one of the reasons that I started to get into working with AI tools like ChatGPT and some other AI tools. Um, the reason I got into it was because I was a little bit terrified of it like many people in the 90s were sort of terrified with computers and emailing um, a lot of people sort of said that the computers and emails would take away all of the jobs for writing letters and paper paper would be dying paper would be dead the computers and email actually enhanced paper so much people began typing everything out and printing everything in mass <laughs> quantities and paper companies even shifted to cardboard boxes if you check your house tonight, you'll probably get two or three cardboard boxes from Amazon shipped from all over the world. Um, so it can be terrifying, but history tends to not necessarily repeat itself, but it tends to rhyme. And I think I've seen this story a few times, um, certainly read about it at least, and it really helps augment people's lives and their jobs and enhance them. So hopefully people aren't too terrified, um, especially after today, you'll see how friendly ChatGPT can be and fun. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much kind of why I started with it. Yeah, and I know you um, are actually using friendly language with ChatGPT just in the off chance there's an AI apocalypse coming our way. Um, at least you were one of the friendly ones to the to the friendly ChatGPT bot. Yeah, exactly. We even develop a little bit of relationship, you know, friendly good morning every now and then, <laughs> you know, no tasks required. So why not? <laughs> you know, a little kindness goes a long way. Of course, of course. Um so maybe walk us through, what was the first time you thought, hey, I have a problem and I think ChatGPT might be able to help me with some of the work that I'm doing in Salesforce? Yeah, absolutely. Well, ChatGPT is a very technical tool, um, but it sounds like a human. And in the technical job that we do at Salesforce, we often partner with other peers and reviewing each other's work. Maybe if somebody has a problem or a question, or wants to learn about something, we collaborate. Uh, but when somebody that I normally reach out to is in a meeting, but I wanted to do something pretty quickly, um, I thought, you know, there's something just a little bit off about what I'm doing right now. I have this big formula, but I don't know why it's not working. I threw it into ChatGPT, ChatGPT analyzed it and gave me exactly what was wrong with it. And then I was able to test it out. So instead of relying on someone else, waiting for them to be available and then collaborating on that problem, ChatGPT was that partner. And I think ChatGPT and other AI tools can be that partner for a lot of people in technical roles and any job in general. That's great. That's great. Well, I know you have a couple things you want to share yeah. uh, with the listeners and viewers today. Um, I'm really interested to, to go through these. And um, I think it's going to prompt a lot of discussions. I hope people watching this also, um, if, if you have your own ideas of how you've used ChatGPT in this type of work, uh, it'd be interesting to add that as well. But but Christopher, what's one of um, what's one of the problems ChatGPT has helped you solve? One of the problems it's helped me solve is working and collaborating with other people. You just mentioned that you wanted to get more information from people that might be watching or listening to this on how they use AI tools, and that's exactly what I wanted to do. The more people that we can get into 
collaborating together at work in general, but specifically in technical tools, opening up a lot of these things like code and formula to people that might not be able to understand it or don't really have the interest in doing that. The more people that we can get to collaborate, the better the work becomes. Um, so for example, I'm going to use ChatGPT here up on the screen, and I'm going to just tell it uh, some human language, really. And it's going to do exactly a little bit of what I want. So I'm going to paste a message in there that says, hello, hope you are having a nice day, just for a little bit of kindness. <laughs> and I make said, sure to be kind. Yeah. And I said, I need help with the Salesforce validation rule. People should not be able to move an opportunity to the stage SQL from the stage nurture unless the field type has a value in it. So this is something that I get pretty often in the technical role. People will say, hey, I want to add this to Salesforce. I want to make this requirement. And they'll use plain, simple human language like this, but they don't know how to do the technical back end. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to send that to ChatGPT. ChatGPT is thinking, says, hello, I'm happy to, didn't ask about my day, but that's okay. I forgive him. This is a workhorse. <laughs> Here's a validation rule that will prevent people from moving an opportunity stage SQL to nurture unless the field type has a value in it. And as you can see here, the majority of people don't know how to write this type of formula. They don't know how to use this type of punctuation. They don't know these functions. For example, is changed, is pick val, prior value, is blank text, and all these parentheses. For most people, it looks boring. ChatGPT also explains it, but with this validation rule, I can simply click on copy code and I have a test Salesforce validation rule right here. I'm going to throw it in here and as I'm looking at this as a human, it of course typed this out faster than I would manually type this entire formula out. I do see that something might be a little off and it says no errors found. What I was thinking is that is blank text type uh, type is actually a pick list value, so is blank won't work. That's why it threw text in there. Um, I will tell you that before this demo, I did try this, and it had is blank type, and I told it, no, that has an error. Please correct it, and mm -hmm. it corrected it. So I think maybe it learned from this morning. Wow. So now that it threw that formula into there, I can choose save. And if I were to move an opportunity like this from Nurture into SQL and mark as the current stage, it will tell me ChatGPT says you cannot move forward unless you fill out type. Thank you, ChatGPT. So then I'll come in here and say, great, thanks, love you. <laughs> and just like that, ChatGPT instantly created this validation rule for me. Salesforce in general is already low to no code, but this is something that makes it much more inviting to almost anyone to come collaborate. So then now that I'm able to open this up to other people that might not have written this code manually, like I was doing mostly in the past, um, they're able to create this and I can quickly review it for them. We can collaborate together on how to make this code better or more efficient um, or add things. And just like that, it created the validation rule for me. Instead of me doing it manually, I, in reality, I would save a lot of time doing that and able to collaborate with others that might not normally do this on their own. Yeah, that's I, I think for most people, leveraging AI is either going to help you do something faster mm -hmm. or it's going to help you solve something more complex by giving you inspiration of potential solutions. Um, and I think this is a, this is a great example. Uh, clearly, it's pretty quick to just ask a question, copy paste it in, put the human element of making sure it fits the business context of, of your problem, and then and then off you go. Um, this is an excellent example. What's another way you've used ChatGPT? I've used ChatGPT in a number of ways. I have another example right here that I wanted to show you. Uh, this is from something that I've done a few days ago, um, actually for one of our clients. and. This took about, I'd say, 15, 20, maybe about 20 or 30 minutes with ChatGPT and a few um, prompts and reprompts to get it to do exactly what I wanted. Uh, just like you would collaborating with the team, you might have one, two, or three meetings. You might peer review back and forth, etc. And after I had that, it created this formula for me. It's about, I don't know, 15, 20 lines. 
And it was something that I didn't know how to do on my own after I ran into a problem and ChatGPT helped me learn about it. Um, and then also right now it's translating it. So I then recently just copy and pasted the big formula in here. And I said, what does this Salesforce formula do? Um, and I threw it in here and it explained to me that it says if the term end date is blank, it calculates the day by adding one year to the close date field, um, et cetera, et cetera. Now the problem I was running into, and some people might want to double check their calendars, their forecasting, maybe some of their own formulas, is that next year is actually a leap year. So if you're using, mm. if you're counting days, weeks, months, and February is going to have one less day in it, um, that could throw a little bit of a wrench into some of your plans. So what I needed to do was calculate um, a specific date, but I was running into a lot of trouble with the leap year. And ChatGPT has this for me here, and it created if is blank populate the record term end date using based on the close date it'll take whatever the month is and for example you see 1 comma 31 and 3 comma 31 that's january and march both have 31 days mm -hmm. 4 being april has 30 and then number 2 it says 2 comma if mod year record close date comma 4 this is all a bunch of technical jargon that most people don't even care about but chat gpt was able to throw it in and it can explain exactly what it does so that if the year is divisible by four, it will know what if it's a leap year or not, and then it will calculate the date perfectly instead of being off by one day. So by asking it, what does this formula do? That's essentially what it does, and it breaks it down here for me. For February, return 28 or 29, depending on whether the year of the close date field is divisible by four. So that in contrast to to comma if mod year dollar sign record dot close date most people will get snooze fest when they read that line <laughs> but reading this you can easily see what it does so again kind of circling back to the collaborative effort this tool helps translate things history doesn't necessarily repeat but it does rhymed when we got translation tools we're able to collaborate across borders like and no other time in history and now with chat gpt and other ai tools we can translate a lot of this technical details so fast so quickly and people are able to collaborate on it pretty quickly so it helps me create that formula but it also helped me explain that to somebody else without me taking 20 minutes to type up this page explaining it yep they're able to throw it in in a few seconds yep. and see the human language behind it and that makes a lot of sense i mean every time we run into an instance of salesforce there's usually a complete labyrinth of workflows and validation rules and, and things that we need to do our own research on to even begin understanding uh, what was implemented before we begin to do our work so you know getting faster solving more complex problems and then doing research on something that already exists and learning um, excellent use cases uh, for using this Christopher this was, this was really awesome I, I think um, I know you're gonna have more uh, examples to share in the future and it's only going to get better and better over time um, anything you're worried about by using chat GPT to do work in Salesforce I'm really not worried about ChatGPT doing work in Salesforce or other AI tools and technical programs. I think the benefits just at this time outweigh the cons. And I think for a while they will, um, again, back to the analogy of the paper in the 90s, a lot of people were terrified that letter writing would be dead with email. I think we have some colleagues down in Brazil. I much prefer to email them today than to write a letter waiting a couple weeks to get a response. Um, just today on the radio, I was listening on the drive over here, and I heard that some analysts from Goldman Sachs predicted that they about 20 to 25 percent of jobs would be uh, replaced by AI. Well, how many jobs were replaced by email? Though we gained a lot more jobs um, with technology as we grow. So I think that if anyone's worried or concerned, they have a right to be, and that is good. But I think the benefits will outweigh the cons in the long run. I tend to agree. I know I have a, a, a slight uh, feeling of terror when I look at it just because it seems so powerful, but um, I agree. I think the future is bright. Christopher, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I think we're going to have to do a refresher of this in the future to uh, see what other uh, tips and tricks you've come up with, um, yeah. and I'm looking forward to it. Thank yeah. you so much. At this rate, probably next week. Thank you for having me. <laughs> thank you, Christopher. 
Thank you for listening to this episode. If you like the discussion, please like, share, and subscribe to wherever you listen to podcasts so you never miss a new episode. Thank you.